All right, guys, welcome to yet another cash game review session. Today, we've got our friend Matej, I want to say, and his 50 Zoom sessions on 50 Blitz sessions on ACR. As always, guys, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already, if you enjoy the content. And I hope you enjoy the video, and I will see you in the next one. So we're playing 2550. I would have much preferred this in big, big blinds just so it's easier for me, and it's also easier for people to extrapolate and yourself to extrapolate when you're going up. So for example, if you're playing 25 and L, so you're playing 50 and L, if you need to drop down or you want to move up, it's easier to transfer what you've learned to those stakes because you're doing everything in big blinds instead of actual stakes. So in big blinds is a lot better. If you play on a site, guys, that allows a HUD, use a HUD. Otherwise people are get, have access to information that you don't effectively. And so you'll be losing money. So let's jump in anyway. We're opening 9, 10 on the bottom and we can have a look. We'll jump into the ranges straight away. It is opening 9, 10 off pure. Basically 9, 10 plus. 10, 8 is a bit more marginal. So definitely think that opening 9, 10 is standard. I do want to try and get into everyone's heads that we don't have to open. If we're getting super aggressive regulars in the blinds, opening 10, 10, 9 off is probably not going to be a winning play. If it is, it's going to be very marginal. You know, if we're against two sick nits here that never three bat and fold way too much to steal, again, this is why having a hood is useful, then fucking open 10-7 off. Why not? Like, open 9-4 suited. Open all of these for sure, and then any of these that you think have enough playability, 7-8 off, 6-7 off, king-7 off, stuff like that. So blind on blind is very interesting for me. I am... It's definitely my weakest area. I've looked at some other ranges, and I think that some other ranges do this better. So our opening range is 43% on the button, and it's 45% in the small blind. I think this is fine, but from my experience, even at the lower stakes now, I've noticed that people are reacting better in the big blind. So they're defending a lot more, and they are three betting a lot more than what I've been used to. Opening 45% is really good, or used to be really good, because people were overfolding or just not three betting enough. From my experience at my stakes and from viewing others, even the lower stakes and the micros, people are being a lot more aggressive in the big blind, meaning I actually think that 45% from the small blind is a little bit loose. That I think opening hands like 8-3, 9-3 suited, I know these are, are the borderline ones anyway, but I think that these just are not making money anymore. So I do expect the big blind to be 3 betting a lot more, but again, I think 9, 10 off is absolutely standard and open, but I'm probably cutting a lot of these out now. These 8, 9 off, 10, 8 off, stuff like that. Jack deuce, jack 3, jack 4 suited. I'm probably cutting a reasonable amount of these out. I do think now that at the stakes I play, that having a limping range could be considered okay. Generally, you want to avoid it because at lower stakes, sorry, there's the, the rake's quite high. But I think that as you get to 200 plus, it might be worth doing. It's probably not worth doing here, but I do think that open... I, I would never open any of these borderline hands now. In any case, 9-10 according to the spot, absolutely standard. I'd be opening 9-10 off, I think it's fine. Again, it's going to depend on the opponent for me, how I play. So against a lot of fun players, yeah, you better believe I'll open any king, any ace, any suited cards. Whereas if I'm against a solid reg that's 3 betting a lot, there's no way I'm going to open any of these borderline hands. I've noticed a lot more three betting blind versus blind. I feel as though people are over three betting. <laughs> as if to prove my point. Going for the three bet here with the Jack Nine suited. So the size in here is 10, 9, 8 and a half big blinds. I think this is a little bit big. So we can get away with going with three betting a lot here. And so I think we want to just go a little bit smaller. Seven and a half big blinds will do the trick here. Out of position, we might want to go a bit bigger, maybe up to 10. But I think this is a little on the chunky side, but I don't hate it. And again, like going this size, this is like 10 and a bit big blinds versus a 3x. Again, just a bit chunky here. I don't think we need to go any more than 3x their raise in position. Definitely no more than 3.5x, but I think this is okay. This is what, 3.5x is raise. I think it's fine, but I prefer just going 450 here. Maybe even a little bit smaller. So King Jack here is interesting. Uh, I think, yeah, I think folding is fine. I think that it'd be a pretty loose 3 bet here in these positions. Let's actually have a quick flick, see what it is. So yeah, it's just pure folding here. Wait, let's cut off first. Yeah, yeah, middle position, yeah. So yeah, this is the range that we're three betting in these positions. It's actually really quite tight. So not even, only a little bit of king queen. I'd probably always three bet king queen in these positions. I think king queen's blocks enough and it has, it. you know, it's strong enough of a hand. So yeah, we should be folding here in general. Six seven suited, we open, we flop absolute fucking Jinsky. Yeah, versus a check, we want to be betting here with this hand, I think. So this is basically our best bluff. 
So when we pick bluffs on flop and turn, we want to pick hands that have a lot of equity, but don't really have any showdown. We have literally the nut bluff. We have seven high, but we have a shitload of equity. An open-ended straight flush draw. So this is a hand we definitely want to put money in. I would never, ever check this hand. If somebody checked this hand, I'd be very upset with them. I think sizing-wise, we generally want to... I guess we can pick some big sizes and some small sizes. On ace-high boards, I tend to just go for smaller sizes. In general, probably about a third with quite a decent portion of my range. Including hands like kings and queens, we can still get value from some worse hands on this board. I don't hate just having like a mixed strategy of going big bets and small bets and checks. Even you could go polar and just like have like huge bets and checks, but I think we can just generally go small. But if we're going to put money in as a bluff and, go and choose a big size, this is the perfect hand to do it with. So I'm very much okay in a vacuum of doing this. And he folds. Jack's reopen, we go three-way here. I think I'm definitely see you on this board three-way. This is a hand, so this is a board that I don't mind checking on a reasonable amount. I'm going to check some ace I'm going to check some flush drawers. Jax is one of those hands that does need a little bit of protection. I'd consider checking kings and queens here, but like Jax and below definitely want to be betting. There's also just, we can just get called by some worse hands here. Like we can just get called from sixes through to tens. Not that they should really have tens, but you never know. And go to quarter pots, okay, I guess. I might go a little bit bigger, probably a third, but I don't think it's bad. So this is a weird one um, where I've noticed that some players will do this sort of min click extremely strong and some will do it like generally quite weak. A lot of the time it's going to depend on opponent. I wouldn't be thrilled about 4-bet getting this in in these positions against a fun player, but I think 4-betting is absolutely fine. But the problem is if you like 5-bet clicks, we should probably just fold. We're 120 bigs deep as well, which I know we said like we'll assume we're 100 bigs, but we are a little bit deeper. It does need to be considered, so I really wouldn't be thrilled getting this in. And we see a pretty rubbish board. Why is this fucking guy just... <laughs> I take it you've changed that. I take it purple is the whale tag. And then we get a really dumbass board here with, like, the ace king. I'm probably just checking. And I know it sucks. I'm probably just check folding. And honestly, I don't really need to talk about balance that much because the guy's clearly a fun player. Min clicking and then call him. This is just one of them boards where we don't even have the backdoor flush draw. We can only continue on an ace or a king. A king is not exactly an amazing card. And the time when it is an ace or a king, it's going to be a diamond. He has an absolute shitload here that you can just float with. Like any like 6-7 suited, 7-8 seven, suited, jack-queen suited, king-queen suited diamonds ace queen of clubs there's just so much that can float and take off on later streets and then there's just we're just like dead on like so many turns and it's just honestly against fun players i mean we can like just check range on this board or like close to range we could check a lot on this board in a four back pot and have some check raises which would protect our ace king checks here so if i have aces with a diamond i'm probably always checking on this flop we could consider check raising against the right opponent we can consider check calling, especially with the ace of diamonds. So I don't hate just checking here with quite a lot and then, you know, check folding ace king of hearts. But at the end of the day, when you consider what we're actually going to four bet here, we might not always four bet ace king off suit. Even if we do, we still have aces, we still have kings, we have queens. We're going to have hands like ace five of diamonds. We're going to have ace king of diamonds. We're going to have ace king with the ace of diamonds. There's just a lot more hands that we can have here. Queens want to be three bet in here. I'd suggest going somewhere around 10 big blinds. Not any bigger than that, yeah. I think this is fine, 11 big blinds. I wouldn't do this either. This really annoys me when people do this, when they they, they start fucking around with the sizings and, like, you're, you're in the middle of two parts and you're like, six. No, 5.5, no, six. Like, the difference really isn't that much. Like, it's one big blind difference. Like, you should have, like, a set idea of what you're going to make it, but that one big blind doesn't make that much difference. I think this is a little on the big side, but I think it's fine. 11 versus a this size is fine. And obviously that guy's a fun player. This would be noted that he min clicks and then calls a four bet. But this is the fucking problem. Your ace king doesn't really do a lot. Yes, it's annoying if you have to check fold and you're against a hand like sevens. But if he's not folding sevens on this board, he's just going to call a lot. Even if we have the best hand on this flop, there's so few turns we can continue on that it's just like, it's not really worth betting. I, I don't hate the idea of, of multi-barreling, but at the same time, you're against a fun player, so he's just going to have a... First of all, he's just going to have like a more diverse range of random shit you're not going to put in there, like nines or pocket fours or like nine, ten suited, eight, nine suited. So it's really hard to actually put him on a range of hands. Even though it's a four-bet pot, this isn't a hand he should ever have in a four-bet pot. 
He shouldn't even be three betting in this position. He should just fold pretty flat. So you're going to see hands that you shouldn't see. So it's kind of hard to put them on a range. So for that reason, I just think check folding is literally fine against fun players. Generally against fun players, just wait until you've got good hands and then bat. You really don't need to balance as much as you do from a theory point of view because these players are just bad. They're not going to, they're not going to be thinking logically and rationally like you are. So let's have a look at the notes. Min 3-bat-7s call 4-bat. I think that's fine. I'd put min 3-bat-7s MP um, or under the gun plus 1, whatever terminology you use, just to note the positions because it's kind of different if he does it blind versus blind because, you know, that peeling a 4-bat with 7s blind versus blind wouldn't really be that terrible. Whereas middle position versus under the gun, it's really not fucking great. So now we're just going for the check fold here, which I think is fine. No, this is way too aggressive. Again, for similar reasons. I, I don't even... I'm not thrilled with calling. I don't hate it. The problem is, again, we don't really have any cards to continue on. So we just have to fold on every turn because, you know, even if he just bats an 8 like, like this, we just really can't do anything. What on earth are you doing here? Just fucking give it up, man. This is... No, there's no need for this. No need for this. Doesn't matter if you've got the best hand. There's just no need for it. Fucking deuces. Absolute deuces. He does. Some of his shit is ahead of your fucking hand. Look at what he's just done. He's just owned you so hard by clicking buttons. Don't get yourself into this leveling war with fucking fish. Wait until you've got a good hand. Don't try and win every single pot against these idiots. Look at how much of a knobhead he's made you look like, Matt. Look at how much of an absolute bellend he's made you look like. Ah, oh, he's bet near enough pot. Yeah, I'm going to call with ace high. He's got loads of shit in his range. He's just fucking value bet pocket twos for two streets. Look at this pot. It's a 32 big blind pot that he's just fucking taken with deuces. He's got value from deuces. Absolute nonsense. I get it. We unblock draws. He can have hands like 9, 10 suited, stuff like that. Against a good reg, this wouldn't even be that bad. The reason being we unblock all the draws, but he's not a good reg isn't going to bet twos through to sevens or even an eight, especially for that size in on the turn. So generally, a bigger bet on that turn is going to be relatively polar. It's going to be a jack. It's going to be, you know, maybe a hand like pocket eights, or it's going to be bluffs. Bigger bets in general, by definition, are polar. So they're going to mean like a very good hand or nothing. It's not going to be a mergy hand like pocket twos. Fish do these things with hands like deuces. Not only that, what rivers are we calling on? None. Are you just going to call on like the six of clubs river? Because again, it's hard to put these guys on ranges. This is, this is just fucking, this is just losing money for no reason. This is one of them where you're like, oh, he's got loads of shit. This is just your ego getting involved and be like, no, I'm not losing to this guy again. Like, he's got so many bluffs here. Doesn't matter. Do this with like hands like aces if you know he's just going to start barreling absolute garbage. I would have much preferred a raise on the turn just to get rid of his absolute garbage. No need, no need for this. King nine, uh, I know Bluff the Spot doesn't use this as a three bat. I wouldn't hate a three bat or a call blind versus blind. I think we could mix with this hand. I think it's got good enough playability as well as blocking properties that we could actually three bat this in position. Again, it all depends on how small blind reacts. I, I feel as though the way that I would see it is that now that the big blind is starting to um, react better to small blind opens, that eventually small the small blind is going to react better to the big blind three bats and do a lot more four batting or just not opening as wide. As it stands, from my experience from doing these videos and my own play, that I do think that they're still not reacting well enough into the small blind from the small blind. And part of the reason I think that is I don't react well from the small blind. So I think that three betting is probably better in general, because especially at these stakes, I think you're just going to generate way more folds than they should, than you should, or you're going to not get four bet a lot in any case we check about the flop which i think is okay i wouldn't mind betting this when he checks we can bet a reasonable amount on this board so we're gonna have a lot of straights we're gonna have a lot of two pairs we we really hit this board quite well so think about all the hands we are having at pretty much full frequency hands like eight nine off nine ten off ten eight off i know he's got some of those as well but we block some of the two pairs with the nine we also have queen jack off suit we have six seven off suit we have quite a lot on this board it's, it's actually a really good board for us because we don't have a lot of the strong hands like aces, kings, ace, kings, stuff like that, our range is kind of more condensed, meaning that we ha actually smack the shit out of this board. So I don't mind betting this board for this flop for a small size. We can get value from worse. We also want to protect our hand. As played, I think checking is okay. And I don't mind the bet on the turn. I don't think we need to go this big. 
But at the same time, you know, we are going to want to pick a bigger size in if we check back some strong hands. So I think I'm okay with it. I think it's fine. So this 9-10 off, I'm, I know that we're against a fun play here. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But let's have a look what we actually should be defending big blind versus UTG. So uh, Bluff the Spot just has versus another gun in middle position. And it's not defending 9-10 off or Jack-9 off any of this stuff. Actually, these ones are kind of borderline. I'm pretty much always defending my broadways here. Um, unless it's a particularly big size. This is assuming it's against a 2.2x. We are against a 2.5x. The difference is here that we are against this guy who was a big fun player. So I am definitely defending this against this guy. Um, it's not even questionable for me. So yeah, I definitely like the defend against the fun player. And I'm just going to basically play very, very face up here. So like I'm only going to check raise bluff like really strong bluffs and stuff like that. I'm never going to... I'm just giving up now. I, this is just not the guy to bluff. He's just going to call you with like ace high or some shit. I wouldn't hate bet and turn and, and drill in river, but I'll, I'll be amazed if this works. It's not the worst hand to drill the river with. We do block some flushes. I, I just think you're going about this all wrong. This is fucking well unnecessary. There's no need to over bet here. Like, he has a reasonable amount of flushes still. This is just your ego getting involved that this guy's won two pots. You've got him tagged as a whale in a station. Why are you fucking over betting 10 high against him? There's basically just no need. You don't need to balance your over bets here. And I wouldn't even be over betting that much on this board anyway. Like, what are we actually over betting here? Like, a six is a shit over bet. A king is a shit over bet. A low flush is a shit over bet. It's actually okay against this guy. So we're repping like, no, it doesn't matter what we're repping necessarily for him, but like what we actually choose to overbet for value if we are going to balance really isn't that much. There's just no need for this. You've got him tagged as a whale in a station. The best way to get money from stations is to value bet and value bet thin and value bet big. Don't fucking 2x pot against an absolute goon. Please call with like queens. I really want to see you just get wrecked here. And hopefully it'll teach you a lesson. I think it's your ego because he's just won two pots before. And you're like, oh yeah, fuck this guy. Turn bet's terrible. River bet's not great. And it works, but like that needs to work so often to be making money. So again, 7-8 here is definitely not a defend in general. But against this guy, I think it's okay. But don't call because you're like, I want to beat this guy. Call because this guy's an idiot. And you think you should be able to get good money when you do hit well. This 7-8, so again, I'm probably just folding here. It's It comes down to that there's not really enough good turn cards. So this is just, yes, we're against a fun player. Yes, we're probably going to get a load of money if we drill a 7, maybe an 8. But an 8's not even that great a card. Like, we'd have bottom 2 pair. So not only would our hand be vulnerable against top pairs, like Ace-King, but you could still have hands like Jack-9, Pocket-10s, Ace-10, Ace-8. An 8 really isn't an amazing turn card. If we have 7-8 of diamonds, for example, I think it's a mandatory continue, just given that we have the backdoor flush draw, meaning we can continue on a lot more turns. But against this guy that's, you know, willing to bet like this kind of size with a 10 anyway, I think honestly just folding here is fine. I don't hate it, given that he's just going to have some air. He might have hands like deuces. But the problem is he's going to sort of accidentally bluff a hand like deuces a lot of the time. We get lucky, and yeah, we want to we wanna go big here. Just against this guy, we just want to go big. I know our hand's not that strong in terms of relative hand strength, but if he has, like, a, a king, what on earth are we checking for? I guess checking to allow a, a bet, but check raising is too thin, so we basically just have to check call. Sixes, all right. The thing is, he's not hes not really the kind of guy to bluff sixes. He's just clicking buttons like he did with the deuces before. So I don't hate the check. We'd be going for a check call, by the way. Check raising's too thin because he's going to be relatively polar when he bets. So he's going to have bluffs or strong hands. He's not really ever going to have a hand like ace-queen that bet calls because he's probably just slamming the turn with ace-queen. So if we're checking, we basically have to check call, which I think is fine. But against this guy, he's going to check back a hand like a king. He's going to check back a hand like queen-10. And considering we overbet the, the river earlier with that, yes, he didn't get to call us down, but I still think we just want to bet that and bet a large size. Bet like $5. Wouldn't even... No, it would surprise me if he called with sixes. But it wouldn't surprise me if he called with a hand like 10 jack. Just bet big. When you're against fish and you've got a good good hand, honestly, just bet big. It'll make the most money. I'm very much okay with this lead here. Want to be betting the turn, mainly because when he has 9x, it's really good because we have some kind of free roll. So I'm just going big on this turn. I wouldn't overbet. Overbetting is trash. The idea of this, we're trying to target worse hands, man. 
if we have if we have nine ten over betting is fucking lovely because it is just is i get right so okay again we're going pure exploit here because the the fields are so soft and we're just basically against fun players betting big is fine over betting is not we're specifically now trying to target a four two pairs are going to raise the flop if we have nine x of clubs yes because the idea of overbetting here is we can target 9x. I don't hate it because we do have like a 10 gives us the super nuts. An offsuit 10 gives us the super nuts. So we can basically free roll and get more money in against 9x, which I think wouldn't be terrible. But I much prefer this with 9-10 or 9x of clubs when we have the free roll. We're pricing him out with so many hands. We don't want to do that. He's, he's not really going to have two pair because he's likely to raise the flop. Don't bet so big. This is just... At least to see, at least to see, you know, that we are balancing it. It is good to see that you're balancing it. You, you did overbet a bluff and you're now overbetting a straight, but like, no, just, it's just, it's just too much on this board. Jack 8 suit completings. I think this is okay. <laughs> Flop a lot of open-ended straight flush draws. I like going for check rates here, I think. I think betting is also fine. Again, when you, when you flop this strong, Again, it's not really that theory-based because we're talking a limped pot. We're talking multi-way, which aren't really solved. So, or if they are, nobody studies. So, yeah, I'm, I'm okay going, doing either here. Uh, I like the check back with the King Jack here. With a heart, I'd be much more inclined to bet. Good at adaptation. Just trying to exploit on a... Oh, we turn a straight flush. Okay, then. I don't really know what to say about this other than just fucking put money in. And I'm just going massive here. The thing is, I can't really be bothered trying to just, like, bet really small and target 10x and shit. I'm just going to blast. I'm just going to blast. I just... In one of these spots, what's going to happen an awful lot is you're going to bet and he's going to fold. If you check, he's going to check back a lot. He doesn't really have all that many bluffs, like, once we check here, because he's called a bet on the flop unless he turns a 9 into a bluff. So honestly, when I have a hand this strong, I'm just going to start putting as much money as I can in and just hope to fucking God that we cooler him somehow. So if you check, I want to see a big check raise. If you bet, I want to see a big bet. And a lot of newer players are afraid about big here because the hand's so good. They're like, oh, I really want to get value here. Having a straight flush and having quads and having royal flushes are not good in poker, in cash game poker. It's cool. It's like, oh, check me out. I've got a straight flush. It's fucking shit to get value from. Quads is, is, is even worse, obviously. Uh, like, let's say you have aces and the flop comes ace, ace, x. It's just absolute, It's just a terrible flop. Like, an absolutely horrendous flop. It's like you win, but, like, it's hard to get value. So, honestly, I'm fine just blasting it. Look how quickly he folded. Do you think if you check, he's going to start betting? Or if you bet small, he's going to consider calling or bluff raising? No. Just put loads of fucking money in. Just absolutely blast it. Uh, and I think I'm okay with this King Jack. We could consider bluffing the river here, but we're only really targeting ace highs and king queen. So I think checking back is absolutely fine. Uh, deuces as well, but I think that honestly these hands are going to call. We would have gone for the check raise with the queen 10. Not anymore. Again, I, I think you're just getting greedy here. Going for these pot bats is just a bit ambitious. Checking here would be amazing, in my opinion. No, just like. I will be amazed if you get caught by a worse hand here. I will be amazed if he doesn't have pocket sevens with the same seven of diamonds. I will be amazed. Just, you, you're missing out on value with these bets, man. You are missing out on values on, on these bets. Now, I, I know we could, from one argument, say that we could bluff this a lot. But the thing is, if we're going to bluff and balance it, we don't even need to balance it with hands like queen 10. We can have different sizes. We could do this with flushes and then the nut blocker. And only those hands. King, queen, this is probably just too loose here. Versus middle position. We're out of position. I much prefer suited hands here to do this with. So we're only three batting. And it's just not even doing this. Versus under the gun of middle position. And this is like mixed. So if it was something like this, we could at least consider, you know, like something like this, we could at least consider that maybe versus middle position, it's fine. This is just too loose. We just, I, I just think this is too loose. We're out of position as well. King Queen's really not that great out of position. The best thing about King Queen is it's amazing blockers. Out of position, we're going to get called a lot more and we're just in fucking grim spots. I don't mind the C bat. We block some continues. We block a couple of strong hands like Queens, I guess, maybe. We block some hands like Ace Queen, Queen King, and Queen Jack, Queen Ten of Hearts. 
We also have a backdoor flush draw. I'm okay with the C bet on the flop. I really don't like the three bet pre flop. I think that's a mistake. 10 7 suited. We open the cutoff, which is kind of loose. Cut off the 10 7 suited borderline. So I'll allow it. Again, it, for me, it depends on the table. If it, it definitely depends on button for me. So if we're using a uh, poker tracker, which I know you said you are using, really good to see if this guy has a like button three bat or an imposition three bat or even just a three bat start. If the three bat over hundreds and hundreds of hands is like less than five, then fuck me, am I opening a lot here? Same with the small blind as well. Big blind, you have to worry about a lot less because when, from my experience, people don't three bat out the big blind as bluffs all that often versus these positions under the gun, middle position and the cutoff. So I don't really worry about the big blind too much. So if I'm looking at two guys here with like super low V pip, super low PFR, super low three bat, especially, I'm just going to open like a lot wider in the cutoff. I'm just going to open like a button range from the cutoff, especially if this guy doesn't flat a lot either and he's just folding a lot. We just get to open like super wide. Uh, here, just another unfortunate spot where I think just the only option is check fold. So for, for all of these reasons, when we have a lot of check folds, we should have a lot more checks with stronger hands here for balance. Please don't borrow this turn, even though it's really good for you. King Tammy defend, I think it's fine. I'm Even though it's a really good card for our range, I'm really not a fan of no equity bluffs. Like I'm really not a fan of it. Don't like the size. This size is way too big. I wouldn't hate the bluff on the river though. Yeah, I actually don't hate this. Uh, queen Jack's definitely possible, but we block King 10. We block Queen 10 of hearts. I'm okay with this bluff. It's very difficult for me to say because like bluffing three way, I really don't know the strategy behind it. And honestly, like so few people bluff in these spots because it's just kind of suicidal. But I actually think I really like this bluff. Prefer it with a spade, but it's not really that relevant. I think I like that. Again, you kind of just go in like, you know, overkill here. Like we have a top pair with a 10 kicker and a 10 high flush draw. We don't really be want to jamming money in here. Like it's not like this board's so fucking good. To, you know, our hand's not that strong. We don't just want to blast in as much money as we can here. I think you're just kind of overplaying it effectively. I think that we should value bet, but I actually don't mind checking. And he turned two pair. So he even called with a better hand. Like this is the thing. Obviously on the on the on the turn. So on these boards, I think we want to be betting smaller. The reason we want to be betting smaller is our range wants to bet smaller. Because we've got to consider what kind of hands we want to be value betting. When you bet big, you have to be more polar. So when you're betting big sizes, you can't be betting hands like a pair of sixes for like value. It doesn't really make sense to bet, right? When we bet really small here, we can bet like a king. We could bet some like pocket sevens. We could bet a hand like a six. We could bet some flushes. And we can bet a lot and put it into the small bet range. When we bet big here, we should have a lot of checks. If anything, if we're choosing only big sizings on this kind of board, this hand probably falls into the check category because it's really not that strong in terms of absolute hand strength when there's three hearts on the board. So he can definitely have a lot of check calls with better hands. Case in point, the turn where he just checked calls. Yes, we're ahead on the flop. Again, like you, you kind of just going too big that we're missing out on value. We should be betting this flop for value. We want worse hands to call. When we start blasting pot, if he's got like pocket fives or pocket sevens without a heart, even pocket eights without a heart, he's probably just folding. All right, simmer down, 10 big blinds. This is just a bit big. This is just, this is just too big because I think this goes three or four ways sometimes. Okay, you got it heads up, which is the aim of the game. He should fold. Yeah, let's put some money in. I, I think we want to bet. I, I think betting's okay. Consider a check call, actually, but I prefer check calling when we have, like, the ace of diamonds just because we have the not draw, but I think I like that play. I think that the size there is a little bit too big. Ten big blinds is just a little bit chunky, but I think your sizing's have been chunky. Just because, like, fish will literally limp call, it's not like we're going to take this down as often as you might think. So I think maybe just going eight big blinds is okay. Okay, King Jack, we open. <clears throat> Hang on. No, yeah, button, yeah. Oof. I want to like it. I want to like it. No, that's too big. Don't need to go that big. Just because we're in position against him and he has to fold a lot. He can't do anything without a hand. So we don't need to go this big at all. We can just go 12. The reason being is he's going to be quite inelastic and just call a lot anyway. This guy really can't do anything even with the button because he can't really call with a play left to act or shouldn't really call with a play left to act. We can go 12 here and it does the same thing. This is very aggressive. 
I think he's going to call sometimes, but it's not the fucking end of the world. And honestly, I think we just want to jam this flop. So this is a, this is basically all away from theory because we shouldn't be three betting. We shouldn't really be four betting King Jack off suit here. We should only really use the suited combos and he shouldn't be cold calling and then calling a four bet. So theory's out the fucking window. I don't hate jamming this because we have two overs, a backdoor flush draw and a gut shot. I think jamming is the way to go because of the SPR. This is the problem in four betting to big sizes that we have no post slot play and it's basically just like shit, let's shove and just pray you fold. <laughs> Too spicy. Ace Jack, easy open. Please don't ISO this king three suited. Definitely call. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's, especially with a fun player in the blind here, I think the only option is call versus this limp. So we can still hit nutted hands here. You know, we could hit nut, uh, nut or second nut flush draws and flushes. And against fun players, we want to play pots. I think ISOing would be too loose. So we're checking the Ace Jack, which I think is fine. But the problem is, I think you're checking here, like your hand as opposed to your range. So I think checking with a lot of our range is good on this board. I think you're thinking, oh, I'm checking ace jack because I've got second pair. Whereas, you know, you might consider betting. Do you know what? I, I wouldn't hate fucking clicking this. Don't try any dumbass check raises or silliness because you've got the ace of diamonds. You really don't need to here. I knew you were going to... If you go all in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch you in the mouth. You don't need to do this. <laughs> and there's a couple of reasons why you don't need to do this. I guess if he overplays top pairs, he can have a hand like King-10. I don't think this is going to get through enough because I think you're looking at a very strong range which includes flushes, straights, and two pairs. And I think against a guy you've got on the green tag, he's not going to fold enough of these to make this bluff profitable. Yes, we have a pretty reasonable hand to bluff. We block the nut flush, we block straights, we block two pairs. I really don't hate this from a theory point of view. In practice against a fun player, when he takes the sizing on the river... Honestly, I think calling is fine. I think calling is okay. Here, I honestly think he's going to be quite polar and have a very strong hand or nothing. I think he's going to have flushes, maybe a straight or two pair, but even that seems a lot for better part. I honestly think he's just going to call you with either pocket twos, six, seven of diamonds, or just like ace ten. And if he folds, I think we have the best hand. This is fine from a theory point of view. If we're doing a lot of checking on this board, we could have ace queen of diamonds. We could have ace jack of diamonds. Both of these hands, I think, would make really nice checks. The turn, I'd be likely to bet, but I think check calling is okay. The problem is, if I ever have ace queen of diamonds or even ace jack of diamonds on this turn, I am raising versus this size. Part of the reason I'm raising this size is it looks like a hand that's desperately trying to get to showdown for a cheap price, such as like pocket sixes or like 10 jack or something like that. So for that reason, I think we actually have a reasonable amount of showdown on the river. However, we're quite low down in our range, so I'm probably just check folding on the river. I just don't think this check raise is going to get through against a fun player. I'm kind of hoping he calls you. With, I reckon he's got 7, 8 of diamonds, just a guess. The problem is we probably need to make it bigger than 15. Because first of all, we're going to have the nut flush here for value and we want to make it massive. Especially if we have something like, let's say, ace 3 of diamonds where, for example, we unblock like Jack X and Queen X of Diamond. So I'll be betting for bigger for value, but because of the range we're trying to target, I'm, I'm trying to, we're, we're trying to get him to fold two pairs. He's not going to bet like Queen 10 for this size. He's not going to bet King 10 for this size. So we literally need him to fold two pairs or better. So I'm going bigger than this because of what we're trying to target. Please snap with seven, eight of diamonds. Ah, but look how quickly he folded though. Like there's no way you didn't have the best hand there. Look how fast he folded. You had the best hand. We didn't need to bluff this. Look at that. Snap folded. King Jack suit, we open. King 10, we open. Both pretty standard here. This is pretty much bottom of range here. We looked at it earlier. It was kind of borderline. I really like this flop. We block some Jack X hands. King Jack and Jack 10. We block some of the strongest pairs. We have an overcard and a gut shot. So I'm definitely okay with continuing in position. King Jack on the right hand side. He three bats. I think we have a very easy call. Generally, you don't want to fall about this in, posi in position. It's almost too good. It's just got loads of playability. I'm very happy taking a flop. And this board, I'd be a lot more thrilled on the right if there was a heart. I think going to sizing is kind of fine. We have still a big advantage here, so... Honestly, I'm probably just checking. King Jack of Hearts, not only... So we've got to consider that, firstly, that it's not that amazing and that we don't have the backdoor flushes and stuff, but we don't really block that many strong hands. We unblock the hands we want him to have, like Ace King of Hearts, King Jack of Hearts, Ace Jack of Hearts. So I honestly prefer just checking back and realizing my equity. I think you get check raised a lot in this spot. 
On the left, I think we can start absolutely hammering here, blocking queen 10. Very, can easily have queen 10 here. Uh, I don't like this small sizing. What are we doing here? This looks, this is random. Uh, the jack, yeah, we always want to check back here and just check on the river. Can't value bet. Don't want to bluff this high up in our range. Okay. You've got yourself into this fucking spot with King Tan here. He's got Jack A. He's just fucking owned us all here. Either check or bet big. So if it's a bad turn for our range, we don't really want to be having these small bets, I don't think. We, I guess we just want to be more polar and just go for big bets or checks. Because I'm not going to like bet this size with like Ace Jack ever. I'm just going to either bet big with the intention of folding or just check back and see a river and play a river. So on this river, I think we just have to bluff. We're low down in our range. We block Queen 10. In fact, no, I, I'm probably not bluffing this river actually because it's a deuce. So all of his Jack 9, Jack 8s are probably just going into check call mode. And if he has a hand like 9s, he's probably going into check jam mode because everything missed. Depends on the player. I, I don't really know what to do here. I'm not going to lie. I don't really know what size to pick. I just, I, I really don't like this spot. So, like, I just go bigger on the turn. And then we're not in this spot. Because we, we bet so small and he's raised, he could have some random bluffs. For that reason, I don't hate just betting really fucking small. Because of what we're trying to target. The problem is when we overbet, like, we can never overbet hands like aces, kings, queens here. Or very infrequently, maybe queens like, would actually be okay. But like aces and kings, it's not something we really want to overbet. So we're talking like three quarter sizing for a reasonable amount of our range that wants to get value. Put this queen eight suited in the bin, you fucking fish. So I'm probably going like three quarters, but I also don't hate going about $4.50 to try and fold out some random bluffs. Because again, I think he's relatively polar on the turn that he's going to have very strong hands or air. So by this river, he could have queen 10, 10, 7, jack 8, jack 9, maybe like 8s and 9s if he check raises. And then he just has air. Don't really know what to do here. A half part's just not... Either go smaller to target those bluffs specifically or go bigger. I don't know. Just It's a spot that I just got fucking... He shouldn't have a jack. He shouldn't have a jack. And he's not folding a jack to half pot, is he? What's he, what's he gonna do? Fucking check fold king jack to half pot, getting three to one. Behave. He's probably got jack eight suited. Oh, he could have eight nine, actually. Eight nine's in a grim spot. So I don't hate it for that reason. All right, we'll talk about this queen eight fucking punt in a minute. All right, you probably got eight nines fold specifically. <clears throat> so maybe the bluff's okay. The whole spot was weird. I think we just go bigger on the turn. I really don't like the size. And... Anyway, let's berate you for this queen eight suited. Under the gun opens. Middle position calls. And the cutoff calls. And we think we've got queen eight in the small blind. Let's click the call button. Do you think this is a good play, Matt? Do you think this is a good play? Or do you think this is fucking stupid? Because it's one thing. And it's not a good play. This looks really tempting. I nearly had a go at somebody else for this. Who was it? We were reviewing somebody and they almost went to click the call button with king seven suited in the small blind in a similar position and then like didn't do it. And I was like, well, it's probably just lack of focus. This is just not going to make you money. I know it's really tempting. We're getting a really good price. Look, oh, there's all this money. Probably fun players are just calling a lot. We've got fucking queen eight, right? Not a good hand. We're in the small blind. We are in the worst position. We don't get to realize our equity when we're out of position, we get to realize our equity even less multi-way because let's say this guy bets, which he does, we then cannot call a lot of boards because we have three players left to act. Look, just watch this, just as, as perfect point. We flop top pair. I know it's a monotone board and, and we can't even, we, we can't even consider doing anything but folding. Think about how many boards you've got to fold. What happens if this is just king six two with two spades you do like king six two with two spades the king isn't a spade and he bets this size we still have to fold this many way we don't get to realize our equity we don't have good implied odds on a spade because we're out of position and they get to check back a lot and just control the pot so we can't do a lot on so many fucking boards so this is terrible and it doesn't seem like a lot. Oh, yeah, we're getting a good price. It's only costing us $1. But then you've got reverse implied odds. Queen high boards. Are we just going to fold if this is queen six two rainbow? Do you think people are betting five way with a worse hand? 
I mean, probably. This is fucking ACR, but you get the idea. Cut this shit out. It's just burning money. Not only that as well, in the big blind, it's a lot better for two reasons. First of all, we're getting an even better price. Secondly, we are closing the action. We are not closing the action here. When we call here, we do not necessarily get to see a flop. This guy, Looney Lovegood. Look at him. He's, he's, this guy could squeeze. Well, if the board comes queen a8, then you just fucking, you get wrecked by queens, hopefully, from under the gun. If you flop a straight, even, even if you flop a straight, you don't flop the nut straight. Like, you can still be against king queen, which all of those can have. We have aces, though. That's a good hand. King nine suited, probably just fold in versus under the gun open. Pawn t3, but. I don't hate it, actually, because we're deeper. Again, the sizing is too big in, in both cases. 12 and a bit big blinds. This isn't that bad here. No, we're deeper, so it's not even that bad. It's better than the uh, the thing you want. All right, well, now we're just fucking triple barreling, aren't we? In fact, now we're doubling, and then I'm probably giving up on river. I think this is a, a card we should definitely barrel. The problem is he has a lot of ace-jack and ace-queens here. It's kind of good that it's a spade. It takes out some of the combos. But blocking King Tan at least is something. Yeah, we may as well fire the second barrel. And, and we get it done. But I still don't think we need to three bet that hand. Why are we betting 70% on this flop? No. If we're going to do this with any hands against fun players as well, do it with much better kickers. Do it with Ace King, Ace Queen. This is just, again, that kind of... He still has better hands once we bet that big. Just stop trying to get so much money in. Hey, think about how thin this is getting for, for a bet on the turn. It wouldn't surprise me if he just calls with a better hand here. Uh, it's it's so hard to get... Once we two-thirds of the, the, the flop and then half-pot the turn, are we trying to target, like, Ace-4 suited? Ace-7 suited? Think about how little combos there are. Shouldn't have the off-suit combos. We're getting really thin here. Just go with smaller sizes on the flop. Potentially even think about checking that back every now and then. Oh, this is dumb. Honestly, I'm just folding jacks here. I'm literally just folding jacks. This is just a really shit spot where we're just gonna... Like, we're out of position. No, I'm just folding here. Call me a nit all you want. I'll slap you around the mouth, but just... I can't be arsed getting involved in this spot. Because of how tight people are. And I know it seems so dumb, and maybe in theory we should be fucking doing it because there's dead money out there, effectively, but... It just really sucks if we get jammed on. Do we call? Probably not. Do we really need to put in, like, 24 big blinds just to hope that we take it down pre? Honestly, I think we can just be quite tight. Uh, King 4 suited. Uh, we call. I'm probably just folding this turn. Yeah, I think we have an easy fold with this King 4. It feels so nitty. But, like, you've got to consider that some of his flop bluffs now just get there. Like, ace-queen... Yes, there's more draws here. You can definitely have hands like... I really don't know in this spot. The problem is, this is a board... If you're against aggressive regs, they're just going to fire this a lot. Because they have such a sick advantage. They have kings, jacks, tens. Ace, queen. Ace, king. Aces. King, jack, suited. We have none of these hands because we should be 3 betting them. So, I'm just continuing here with... The thing is, on this flop texture versus a big size, I'm doing no raising. So, I'm, I'm going to always call hands like sixes, king, ten... Ace, queen. So I am actually have a lot of stronger hands by this turn. I have king, jack, king, ten. Ten jack of hearts and ten jack of diamonds when I don't three bet them. So 50% frequency, I'd say. And then we still have some king x of spades. And some hands like maybe seven, eight of spades. I'm honestly just folding this turn. No, not versus that sizing. So if I'm against a reg that I'm talking about versus that sizing, because they have such an advantage on this board, I don't want to be doing a lot of raising. The reason being is that I'm going to have so many middling spots with hands like King 4 suited, Ace 10 off suit, like King 7 suited, that I don't really be want, to, want to be raising too much because they're going to be, you know, being really aggressive on this board. And if we let's say we always raise King 10, 10 6 suited, King 6 suited, and 6s, by the time we get to this turn, we literally only ever have King Jack off suit that's a strong hand here. And then by the river, we only ever have King Jack off suit. And so, like, we're put in a fucking spot where we basically have to call any size bet on the river with King Jack off suit in theory because it is technically our best hand. And we cannot have a better hand than King Jack off suit because we can't have 10x of spades. So, if we check raising all our strong shit on the flop, we never have any good hands here. 
And if we're chat raising all that shit, then we should be chat raising Queen Jack and we should be chat raising Queen Nine suited. So we really just don't have any strong hands, which is why I like to just call a lot. So the problem is, I think he's going to put you in a spot here and just bat the river when he bombs the turn. And even when he checks back, I think when he checks back here, he's going to have a hand like King Queen. And when he bats, he's going to have very strong hands. And then he's going to have some bluffs like 7-8 suited that just have no showdown. I think I'm just folding here, but I would have folded the turn. I don't know if we can fold the turn. I don't know if solvers would say we fold the turn. I think folding's fine. No, no, don't do this. I, I think you, you can donk, by the way, certain boards. This is actually fine, but just in general, don't have a dunking range. It's really hard to like balance and actually play well. Part of the reason we have a dunking range, the only reason we ever dunk is when we actually have range advantage on that board. I don't know if we do in these positions, big blind versus cut off. We've got a lot of strong hands for sure, but overall range advantage, I don't think we do. It's more on like boards like two, three, four from the big blind. I don't hate this. You just want to make sure you balance if you're playing against regs. The reason I don't hate this is because I really don't want it to go check, check sometimes with sets. The reason why I don't particularly like it is a lot of opponents are still just batting hands they shouldn't, especially in ACR. Some of the regs are really bad. So I still expect them to just bat aces, kings, queens, jacks, and we can just get a check raise in there. So I much prefer check raising than um, leading, and that goes for my bluffs and my value. So... My 910s, my 45s, my sets, my two pairs, I'm going to check raise. And I'm also going to consider check raising. Um, you're just going to pot this and just get a fold again. Even, this is better, but... I mean, against this guy, it's not great. Like, I guess he has a set. Go small here. We, we, want, to, we want to get called. Okay. Show me pocket sixes. Okay, uh, I don't hate that. Again, I would just generally stick to checking from the big blind. We can have Duncan ranges on certain boards. Again, I'm talking from a theoretical approach. If you know a guy is going to fold a lot or do whatever a lot, I think it's fine. I'm glad we didn't at least blast pot on this turn. I'm glad we bet a bit smaller. I'd really love to know what he had, by the way. Because he called the turn pretty quickly and then he agonized on the river, meaning that I th it wouldn't surprise me if he had a set. It's very unlikely he's going to have something like, I guess, 6-7 of spades would make sense maybe like ace 10 of like hearts but it should probably just fall quicker probably just had an overpower to be fair in any case i don't hate it uh i'd rather go smaller on this river to be fair and we can protect our range by batting some hands worse than a than a straight here like some sets if we don't but i think in general just be check raising so i think you played relatively well throughout that i think that pre-flop you were you were fine pre-flop you were fine I actually didn't mind that King Jack off 4-bet bluff. I think that was fucking ridiculously aggressive. <laughs> and you really need to pick your spots, but I, I honestly think that that was okay. Um, but yeah, I think you played relatively solid. Just be careful with the pot size bets and the big bets. Just literally all of your sizes, just bring them down a little bit, like just in general. When you're betting on flops, turns, rivers, stuff like that, really try and think about what you're trying to target, what you're trying to represent, stuff like that. So when it's a bluff, what are you trying to represent? What hands do you have credibly for value, right? you know, that you should be balancing with. When you're betting on the betting on the river, what kind of hands do you want to call?